everyone. Today we're going to be working with this handheld pH meter. pH is measured on body fluids in the clinical setting in order to uh, find out if a patient has a certain condition. There are multiple types of body fluids and each one would have its own pH. So um, a change in pH could indicate a disease state and that's why this is done. So uh, first thing we're going to do is we're going to talk about uh, the calibration we're going to do. This analyzer or pH meter rather uh, allows you to do a couple of different types of calibrations. Calibration needs to do be done at least one time weekly. We're using the U.S. setting, which you'll immediately see when you turn this analyzer on, and that is a three-point calibration. So we're using a four calibrator, it's the pink one, a seven calibrator, which is the yellow, and a 10 calibrator, which is the blue. Following that, we're using the high and low QC, and then there's a patient specimen. Okay, uh, in between each step, we're going to make sure to wipe the pH meter free of uh, excess fluid, and then we're going to place it in the tap water just to rinse it to make sure we don't have cross-contamination between each of the containers. All right, so let's get started. So the first thing you wanna do is you want to take the cap off the base. This is to make sure that the probe is protected um, and you don't want to touch the probe because you don't want to mess the probe up, okay? So this is what it looks like on the bottom. Again, please don't touch it. So you can turn it on and what you'll see at the beginning stages of this is the pH USA, that's the three point calibration. Uh, it's trying to measure the pH right now of air at this point and uh, it also has the temperature there. So the first thing that we're going to do is calibrate. So when you turn this on and you see the screen, you're gonna need to hit the cal button I will first put this in water, okay? And now I'm going to hit the cow button. You're gonna see immediately that it has the CAL at the top of the screen, which says that that's in calibration mode. So the number on the bottom here is a previous calibration analysis that was done. And this is the measurement that's happening right now on the top. So you can see that the water is um, basically neutral. So that would be seven. Okay, so I'm going to swirl my calibrator. I'm gonna open it up and we're going to put the pH meter into, into the calibrator. So I put this in the bad spot. Okay, so this is going to be pH 4. So we're going to gently wipe down, okay? You're not going to touch the probe, and then you put it into the 4, okay? So it's trying to figure out on the bottom, it's trying to figure out what was the previous analysis that was done. So it's 4.01. And now it, the sensor is um, narrowing in on what it is that uh, is being measured right now. So you can also stir uh, the solution with the pH meter. In fact, it tells you to do that for this meter uh, when you're analyzing specimens, uh, not necessarily the calibrator, but maybe that'll make it get done faster. So um, <clears throat> that is just uh, allowing the fluid to pass uh, along the calibrator. Um, sorry, the calibrator to pass along the sensors in the bottom, the probe, and that way hopefully um, just settle down on that number. So my number here is going to be 4.38, so 4.3. So it is less than 0.5 of a change, uh, 0.5 to 1.0 change, so I'm going to mark that as being accurate, okay? And so, what I will do now as I pull it out, I wipe specifically just down, straight down, and then I put it in the water, okay? So I'm going to cap the number four calibrator. We're gonna move on. This is after we recorded 
the number to make sure that it was accurate. Okay, so this is calibrator pH 7. All right, so we're going to take the meter out of the tap water, wipe straight down, okay? And then we're going to put it into the pH meter. So you just want to make sure that the uh, meter is submerged into the solution and that way you definitely have an accurate reading. So here we're trying to narrow in on the top number, we're trying to narrow in what the, me the current measurement is. And notice we're still in the cal screen, okay? Since it is the US, um, the US calibration, it will automatically do three. So if you're not going to do three, you can press the cal button to get out of that calibration and start uh, to measure because the calibration excuse me, the pH meter immediately goes into the measurement screen. Again, this is a beautiful um, accuracy here, okay? You could also call it precision because we're measuring um, very close to the same point. So it is less than uh, 0.5 to a 1.0 change, so I'm going to say that that is accurate and record that. <clears throat> Put it back in the tap water. Sorry about the glare. Put the calibrator on. Calibrator top on. And we're moving automatically to calibrator 10. So if you notice at the beginning of this analysis, the pH meter uh, was figuring out which calibrator we were doing. So you don't have to do this low to high. You could do it high to low. Um, just make sure you have a standard process that you do. All right, look at this. We're immediately, it immediately knew it was going to be 10. And we are getting, we are zeroing into that 10.0. Okay, again, we want to wait till it stabilizes to make sure that that is an accurate reading. So it looks like it's stabilized. It is within the 0.5 to 1.0 range um, difference of uh, the 10. So that is still accurate. We're good with that. Wipe straight down, excess fluid off. And then we'll put it back in here. And now we're going to move on to the measurement screen. All right, so we are out, we want to go out of the calibration mode, so we're going to hit mode, enter. Now we have an error, okay. We'll press calibrator. Okay, now we're in measurement. Okay, so in order to get out of the uh, calibration mode, we need to press cal again, and that uh, takes us out and uh, immediately puts us in the measurement mode. All right, so you won't be in the calibration mode to measure your QC. Okay, so we're gonna swirl the QC. Wipe excess off and put into the high. We're going to move it forward so you can see better. Okay. We're making sure to submerge the, the probe and we're swirling. Now I'm going to let it sit and let... Um, excuse me, let it stabilize. Okay, so this is a 7.61. You 
using a different pad. I've got a fresh one. All right. And now we're moving forward to the low. around okay our low is done And then the next thing we're going to do is analyze the uh, patient specimen. So all the while you're marking down your QC numbers, uh, any reagent that you use, whether it's a standard as a calibrator or a QC, you want to make sure you're recording your results. I got a new fresh pad again. Okay, and now we're going to put it into the patient specimen and so looking at this, what is that patient specimen? Is it alkaline or is it acidic? It's reading 2.2, could be 3, it all depends on where we're going to settle down here. Um, and what you want to do is um, note what kind of fluid it is and uh, decide whether that's abnormal or normal. So uh, the gastric um, fluid is very acidic. Uh, because it has to break down uh, food. Okay. And if it wasn't acidic, uh, that could be a disease state that we would find, excuse me, by uh, measuring the pH. Okay. I keep reaching for the wrong one. All right. So. That was how you use the pH meter. Um, in clinical laboratories, you would probably have a standalone pH meter, not a handheld, uh, that would need to be in solution. The probe would be in solution uh, while it wasn't in use. Uh, these ones, we don't have to. We can cap them. Uh, the manufacturer gives you a choice whether you want to do that or not. So that's it for this video. The next video I'm going to do is with pH paper and uh, we'll see, uh, we'll look at the accuracy between the two of them. All right, thank you so much for watching and I'll catch you next time. Have a great day, bye.